Hey Bronco Nation, I'm Jordan and today we are here in Johnson Valley to visit the famed Bronco Knoll. Now we have this insane Bronco Raptor behind me that we have been playing with for the past few days, putting it through its paces and seeing just what this machine can do. But if you're not familiar with Bronco Knoll or are looking to go for yourself today, we're gonna head up there, take you with us and show you how you can take your very own Bronco to the famed Bronco Knoll. Now we're starting our trip from the lake bed here in Johnson Valley, but if you're coming from Palm Springs, Yucca, or even the direction of Victorville, there's multiple ways to get to Bronco Knoll. Now after leaving the lake bed, you're gonna hop onto Boone Road, which is gonna take you all the way back up to the main highway, also known as Old Woman Springs Road. From there, you're gonna take a right and head towards Lucerne, uh, where we're gonna turn off and head towards the Knoll. Now, depending on the size of your group, how many vehicles, and how leisurely you want to take this trip, the round trip can take anywhere between two to four hours from Johnson Valley. Some general things to remember, anytime you're going out on the trail, you're always going to want to make sure you have some form of communication in case something goes wrong, extra water and snacks in the event that you're stuck out there longer than you would like to. Never a bad idea to have recovery gear, and of course, when doing any rocky or off-road terrain to air down, not only to increase the ride comfort, but to also decrease the chances that you might pop a tire. Okay, we have made it here to the base of Bronco Knoll on Transmission Line Road. Now, there are a few ways to go up Bronco Knoll. There's, uh, they vary in difficulty and length. The one we're gonna take uh, is probably the one people use most, um, and it is probably the most challenging, I would say, but it is the most direct and it is the quickest. There are a few uh, roads or trails up that go up the back of Bronco Knoll on the other side, but it depends on your skill level, on your comfort level, and of course what your vehicle is capable of. We're on a Bronco Raptor, so it can really tackle anything and really its only limitation is its width. But if you're in uh, a Bronco with smaller tires or you may not have a front locker, not that you need one, but just to be safe, uh, you could take one of the other routes as well. So the first thing we're gonna do here as we turn off Transmission Line Road Let's go ahead and put the vehicle into neutral, switch over into four low, which is of course gonna change a transfer case from four high over to four low. It's gonna activate our uh, off-road camera system, which is great, really helpful on this, especially as you're going up and over some of those kind of blind hilltops or blind breakovers uh, where you can't see what's in front of you, especially in a vehicle of this size. Uh, what you also could do and what I'm going to do is switch the vehicle over into rock crawl, rock crawl mode. Now, of course, this Raptor is equipped with rock crawl mode. That's going to disconnect my stabilizer bar and also put, put on the rear locker. Now that 4Low is engaged, we're going to switch it back into drive and uh, we're going to head up Bronco Knoll. Now, as far as tire pressure goes, we have aired down to the mid 20s, 23 to 25 on all of our tires. And we've found that to be the nice sweet spot for the Raptor, uh, both on-road and off-road. Not that you should drive at 25 or these pressures on-road all the time, but for the transit sections between Johnson Valley um, and kind of the turnoff point for Bronco Knoll or even getting from Palm Springs or Yucca, it's kind of a nice even ground to be. And of course, as the tires warm up, they will increase in pressure. Uh, but of course, choose what you'd like to do or choose what pressure you're most comfortable with. But we found for us, this works best. Now the biggest thing with these bigger incline and kind of rocky sections is just taking it slow and controlled. You want to keep your momentum, uh, but not do it too fast. Uh, Amy Clouds, one of the uh, one of my favorite off rodeo trail guides at Off Rodeo Texas, says momentum, not speed, and that is exactly the principle we're applying here. We're keeping our momentum as we go. Uh, up this hill and just keeping it steady and controlled I'm using the front cameras here to see kind of over my hood because uh, the hood of the Raptor is so tall um, but just taking it at a nice pace watching what's around me being mindful of my tires uh, this Bronco Raptor can really just crawl up this hill with no issues whatsoever if we do get in a place where we start to slip you can of course go ahead and engage that front locker to pull you up uh, but for the majority of this hill at least the straighter sections the rear locker is doing all the heavy lifting now this it is a pretty aggressive incline at some points getting to 22 degrees of pitch here and i went ahead and turned my rear locker off uh, so the only thing I guess activated right now is a stabilizer bar disconnect still in four low uh, as we make our way towards the top of this knoll and then we're gonna kind of follow the ridge line across and head to the lookout point. 
Now, for those of you wondering what Bronco Knoll is, uh, Bronco Knoll, uh, or Johnson Valley in general, was kind of the birthplace or the testing site of the Gen 6 Bronco. Ford performed hundreds, if not thousands, of hours and miles of durability testing out here, some of which we've been fortunate enough to be a part of, and those videos are uh, will be linked in the description below if you want to go see some of that testing footage. Uh, but this is where they really put Bronco through its paces, proving it out, making sure all the technologies, hardware, software, were really up to the task. Uh, and so Bronco Knoll is actually the coordinates that is uh, imprinted or engraved in the roll bar above the front passenger's head, um, tucked up there. So the Ford team and Bronco team put Easter eggs all around the vehicle, and this is one of them. So early on in uh, Bronco Nation's history, you could say, um, Blake Torgerson, who is a now a off rodeo site director and land surveyor, found the coordinates, came up here, um, and actually put a monument in the ground that we'll see in here in just a second. And it's kind of become a site for Bronco owners across the country uh, driving out here, coming up to the top of the knoll, taking pictures, of course, leaving trinkets, which we don't necessarily endorse, but uh, we'll leave that decision up to you. But it's certainly a cool adventure for Bronco owners and Bronco communities to come on. We love seeing the pictures that Bronco Nation members uh, and members of the community have sent us. There's BN stickers up here, grill badges, all sorts of fun stuff, which is really neat to see. Um, so if you're in the area, or even if you're not in the area, we'd really encourage you to come up to Bronco Knoll uh, and be part of this awesome vehicle's history. Now, if you want a little more detail, history, and kind of the story behind Bron how Bronco Knoll was found and how the marker was placed, I'm gonna link the forum thread uh, where Blake actually laid it all out. There's pictures um, and he details um, in, with way more expertise than I have on kind of the background and the history and uh, what makes Bronco Knoll Bronco Knoll. So I'd encourage you after you watch the video to click the link below and go read up on that article. Well, here we are, not too long of a drive at all, maybe just 10, 15 minutes up the side of this hill, mountain, knoll, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and we have made it to the top of Bronco Knoll. Let's check out these views. Well, here we are at Bronco Knoll, affording you some of the best views of Johnson Valley. Such a cool place to come up here by yourself or with some of your closest Bronco friends and just take in this amazing scenery. Now this, as I said on the way up here, is where a lot of the Bronco durability testing happened, uh, but you're not gonna find much of a better view up here in Johnson Valley. Now, my personal favorite time to come up here is towards sunset, especially out here in JV, you are afforded some of the prettiest sunsets I've ever seen. So coming up here, bringing some snacks and just watching the sunset over the valley and light up these clouds is really special. Of course, you'll probably wanna get down the hill before it gets too dark, but nonetheless, it's a great place to come. And if we look over here, there's some cool memorabilia that Bronco owners have left over the past two years. This flag situation has been erected and you can see Bronco Nation member 5152 has been here, which is really cool. Also got a Bronco Nation grill badge. Uh, and then this pile of rocks, which people have seemed to leave notes on. We don't encourage destruction of nature, um, but if you do feel compelled to take the Sharpie and leave a rock, which I'm gonna do now, you can do that. Of course, be mindful of leaving trash and stuff. We'd like to apply tread lightly principles to everything we do. So make sure whatever you bring up here, you take back down. Uh, just be mindful of the environment and the space because we don't wanna ruin it for people uh, years from now. But I'm gonna pick up a rock, commemorate that we were here and uh, get going on back down the hill. Jordan from BN, member number 199. Jordan from BN has been here, guys. No, that's actually my third time up here, but the first time I've ever let a rock because the last two times I've been up here was probably two years ago, and this little memorial did not exist, so now I'm a part of it. Put this marker back for the next person. Okay, now the exact coordinates that uh, Blake went ahead and marked out and put a plaque is right here, commemorated by this piece of granite and this nice little medallion that says Bronco Knoll, Bronco Nation 2021, with the exact coordinates that match uh, those imprinted in the Bronco. So super cool. Come take a picture with it. If you have been to Bronco Knoll, let us know in the comment section down below when you came and what vehicle you came in. And if you're planning to come to Bronco Knoll, you can also let us know as well. Okay, now that we've made it to the top of Bronco Knoll, left a little note on a rock. 
time to head back down. Now we did take the more aggressive route up here and we're gonna take that same path on the way back down. But if you're looking to take an easier trail, there are a few other options, two in specific that kind of come up the backside of Bronco Knoll. The map uh, with those trails on it in the description will be linked down below. So if you wanna see an easier path, you can go ahead and check those out and see if that trail is better for you. Now those are a little bit longer, both length and time wise, but if you're looking to go a little bit easier on your vehicle or you yourself aren't super comfortable with going up the steep grades that we took on the way up here, you can go ahead and, and check those trails out. What we did yesterday, cause this is our second time up here this trip actually, is uh, did it once on the harder path and then once on the easier path just to see um, the Raptor, due to its width, isn't the best to take on that easier route because that route is a bit narrower, but there's a lot less uh, rock crawling, so to speak, a um, lot less rocks in general, and it is more of just kind of a dirt trail. There is a bit more articulation um, and pitches up and down, but overall the trail um, is a lot less rough than the one we took up here and are taking back down as well. Now I am going to go ahead and try trail control just to demonstrate it and to see how the Bronco Raptor does. Uh, you activate that by pushing the little Bronco in the middle of your goat modes dial. That's going to bring up um, a information box on your gauge cluster that says one pedal active. Um, but if you want to do trail control, you're then going to use the set buttons like you would for cruise control. Um, and you can then take your foot off the gas and brake and toggle between, uh, if you're in rock crawl mode and four low, it goes in half mile an hour increments. So you can do one, one and a half, two, two and a half, uh, and just go the speed that you're comfortable with. I'm setting it here at two and a half. The vehicle is applying the gas and the brake, uh, more so the brake since we're going downhill. But it is slowly easing me down uh, the side of this mountain at two and a half miles an hour. Now, for those of you that are not a fan of uh, autonomy and the vehicle handling uh, what it's doing, especially on a trail like this, a nice balance is one pedal. To activate that, again, you're gonna push the Bronco in the center of your goat modes dial. It'll say trail one pedal drive active. Um, and then what that is basically gonna do is kind of act as left foot braking. So the vehicle is going to apply the brake anytime you let up on um, the gas or the accelerator. So to get the vehicle moving forward, you're going to use the gas pedal. And then as any time you let up on the gas pedal fully, the vehicle will automatically come to a stop. So my foot is not on the brake right now at all. I'm just using my right foot. And this basically acts as a computer system um, doing left foot braking as opposed to yourself doing left foot braking. Uh, for those of you not familiar with left foot braking, that is a technique used usually by professional off-roaders, racers, stuff like that. Uh, when they just want a little bit more control of their vehicle, Shelby Hall talked about it in a previous video with us, um, actually at King of Hammers two years ago and kind of explained what that does and explained that feature. But it's a really nice piece of technology that's there if you want it. Of course, you don't have to use it, but it just adds another level um, to the vehicle for those that may be newer or just wanna feel a little bit more uh, safe when coming down a steep incline like this to know that if something goes wrong, you just take your foot off the gas and the vehicle will stop itself. Now I do like a little bit more manual control and feel when off-roading. So I'm gonna go ahead and deactivate that system entirely by again, pushing that Bronco in the center of the goat modes dial. I'm gonna left foot brake myself as we make our way back down. Now what makes this trip even more exciting is that we're pretty sure this is the first Bronco Raptor to come up to Raptor Knoll. At least, at least we haven't seen pictures of one up here. Now Ford may have taken one up here for durability testing or something like that, but we ourselves, uh, we're not there for it and we haven't seen any pictures. So at least online, we're the first Bronco Raptor up to Bronco Knoll, which is pretty cool. Just for some context, as I cup down, come down this steeper grade, and I think at one point it will get up to 22, 23 degrees. Um, so, is one of the steeper inclines, but just take it slow and steady. Let the vehicle do the work. Yeah, 22 degrees right there. Really liking the Bronco Raptor digital gauge cluster. It displays all the information I need. Shows me exactly the angles the vehicle's at, what the transfer case is doing, where the power is being distributed. I'm not using any lockers, but would show that. My lockers were engaged, it shows the stabilizer bars disconnected, what gear you're in, and it just get, presents all the information that you would need in a situation like this. 
uh, in a very easy to consume way. Well, there you have it, guys. There is a quick and easy trip up Bronco Knoll. You can see behind us what we just went up and down. You can kind of see the flag way back there in the background. I don't know if the camera picks that up or not. But nonetheless, the Bronco Raptor absolutely crushed it. It's a pretty easy trip to get on out here from either Palm Springs, Yucca, or Johnson Valley itself. This is a place we love to come during King of the Hammers, and we're hopefully going to bring a lot of you soon uh, when we are out here at Bronco Base Camp. But if you've been, let us know. If you want to come, let us know as well. There's a ton of pictures online in the forums of Bronco Nation members and members of the community coming up here and visiting Bronco Knoll for themselves. Uh, and we would encourage you to do the same thing if the opportunity presents itself. Of course, thanks so much for watching. As always, we're going to hop back in the Raptor and head straight back towards Johnson Valley. A lot to do before King of Hammers, and we could not be more excited. Thanks for watching. As always, guys, if you haven't already, like and subscribe to this video. Leave us a comment. Join the Bronco Nation. Pick yourself up some merch like the flannels we now have, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Stay safe out there. Enjoy the trails, and we'll see you soon. Bye, guys.